MPA and non-personal awareness in general allows you to address and shift the identifications that you've taken up in life. So they go from limitations to freedoms. Now, a large part of how we take up these identities and hold on to them comes from our relationship with our history. Another way to say that is we get stuck in our past and our memories become our masters. So in this and next week's episode, I wanted to offer you a non-personal perspective on memories. This week, looking at healing the painful memories and next week, how to make the most of your positive ones. So in today's episode, I'll be going over the mechanisms that allow your past to haunt you and give you some practical steps you can use to set yourself free with MPA. So stay with me and let's dive into Healing Your History with MPA. Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. If you're looking to improve your life, to heal, to grow and mature as an individual, but maybe you found that some of the personal development and consciousness stuff has given you the impression that you need to be super serious and vigilant to get anywhere meaningful or feeling like maybe you're just not up to snuff. Well, this show is here to remind you of your humanity and in fact that that's where your true joy and brilliance lies. With over 25 years of experience in the transformation biz and having developed MPA, one of the world's simplest pressure-free approaches to growth and well-being, if I do say so myself, I'll be sharing tips, steps and insights that'll help you navigate all the aspects of life as a growth-seeking being. On this show, it comes to you with a good dose of humour, maybe a smattering of colourful language, a reminder not to take things so personally, and most importantly, to be kind to yourself along the way. Make sure you hit that follow button, and let's get into it. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. I'm delighted that you're here. We are at episode number 139 which means you can find the show notes if you go to www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 139. Check out the show notes there. Also means, especially if you're brand new to the show, by the way, hello if you're brand new to the show, that we have 138 previous episodes you can binge listen to at your leisure on all the usual podcast platforms and wherever you're listening to this right now on this platform. Unless, of course, you're listening to it directly on the the website, in which case uh, that works. (laughs) But if you have a favorite podcast platform, go there, like iTunes, Spotify, you know, all the usual ones. It's all over the place. So there's been a little bit of a gap. Um, I finally got the COVID oh, all through the pandemic. Well, I say we're probably not strictly speaking out of the pandemic, but it kind of is. It's it's kind of a bit of a past thing, isn't it? Uh, I'm figuring that the uh, the FOMO got the better of me. <laughs> I'll tell you something, though. I am very grateful that... Uh, um, all the previous waves of people uh, were willing to host the uh, mutation of the virus in order that it was fairly mild, uh, at least for me. Well, it was a, it was pants. I can't deny it was pants. But at the same time, um, I think I did OK compared to some um, some people that I've heard about. Anyway, so moving on from the pandemic, uh, let's dive into today's history show. Yes, we're talking about memories and history. Now, there are a few things I'm going to be uh, referencing. I'm talking about MPA and working with MPA. If you're new to the show, you might go, what the hell is MPA? Is that M or N? M for mother, N for Nikki? I don't know. It's NPA for non-personal awareness. Um, it's a simple process that helps you stop taking things personally. Now, uh, if you want to make the most of what I'm offering you today, you make sure you go ahead and download the free sheet that you can get from the website. Best place to go for that is www.thenpaacademy.com. Uh, on that page, you will see um, up a button at the top of the page. It says quick start. That's the quickest way to get to um, to the, the sheet. Give me your email. I'll send it straight to you. Um, and also, of course, I'll have the links for that in the show notes. It gives you the words of the process um, and a little bit of help with that. And I'll be referencing it throughout this show. Um, I'm also going to be mentioning a few things that relate to uh, mastery. MPA Mastery is our certified practitioners training. Um, again, that will be there on the uh, if you go to the mpaacademy.com. You can find out information about that if you're interested in becoming a certified MPA practitioner. And also, um, 
if you want to have a look at our existing practitioners, all of whom have access to the things I'm sharing with you. Don't worry, by the way, if you're thinking, oh, he's going to give us advanced stuff only. Now I'm going to tell you about that, but I'm going to give you some things that you can actually do on the back of this show to help you work with your memories. But if you want to get some expert advice with myself or one of our certified uh, practitioners, again, the mpaacademy.com. And again, on that top bar at the menu, you'll see find a practitioner. So that's the place to go if you want to look at the um, wonderful folks that have already been through the training. Have a look there. And finally, today's show is sponsored by, yes, me. <laughs> it always makes me laugh that I sponsor my own show. <laughs> if you listen to this live, so we're currently, as I speak, uh, the, the 9th of August 2022, um, we've got the Harmony Equation, a live event where I'm going to be teaching a very powerful tool, which I'll talk, be talking a bit about today in today's show because it's relevant to today's topic. Um, and if you'd like to come along to that, get yourself along to, you'll get to know this URL, www.thempaacademy.com slash harmony. Um, and you can have a look at that and come join me. Just uh, It's like a afternoon or a morning. There's two times that we're running this event uh come and learn this amazing conflict resolution tool and you can listen to the ad in the middle of the show as well if you're curious about that all right i think i've covered the groundwork there let's dive into the topic let's talk about history let's talk about memories let's talk about what to do with them let's dive in so let's start off with a bit of non-personal theory <laughs> what are memories well, memories are things you remember. They're from the past, aren't they? Isn't that how that works? You're remembering things that happened in the past. Well, yes, you're remembering things that happened in the past, but um, the non-personal perspective really looks through the lens of energy and that everything fundamentally is energy. Now, memories, there's lots of interesting things I could really go off on about memories, not least of which is every time you visit a memory, you change it. Hello, yes, you do. <laughs> Um, but if you think about it, anything that we experience is the translation of energy. It's like an energy packet. So one of the things within non-personal way is often I say you, you can heal without needing to go into the history. Um, and yet here we are talking about history because the perspective is that history isn't actually history. What happens is we constantly regenerate um interpretations of energy so i would talk about that as a memory being an active energy yes in terms of the language and the setup and the way that we think about things in our culture at this time we think in terms of time as past present and future and that's useful as a device but on a pure quantum level it just is right or you could say on a pure spiritual level there's only the now um, but i always think of it in terms of an active energy which is kind of a useful way to understand um, how we get held up in our history. So let's talk about personalizing experiences to specific times. That's, that's my non-personal perspective where um, certainly the traumatic or uh, difficult memories of the past, they continue to affect us. What we've done is we've personalized um, an experience to that specific time. What that means is you're literally holding yourself in that moment. Because if we go back to sort of personalization fundamentals, what is taking something personally? Really, it's saying that's me, that is. That's why we talk about, you know, I talked in the intro about we work with identifications. We set up identities. Who am I? The, the sort of fundamental question. From a memory perspective, um, you, we, can, we can form our sense of identity based on a historic event. Now, if that's a traumatic or unhelpful one, or one in which you've set up um, a limitation of some time, then you effectively hold yourself in that energy, which from the perspective of memories in terms of time, it's holding yourself in the history. So, and what we can do in, in very strong experiences is um, we literally form an identity around them. Now, uh, a solid identity is really sort of a solidified personalization. So if you have a difficult memory in the past, you can really set something up that this defines who I am, right? Now, that's all well and good as long as it doesn't have, you know, 
uh, an unhelpful impact. But what we're looking at here <laughs> are those things where, you know, our history defines us in a way which limits us. Now, you're going to come across that um, if you start to sense limitations. It can show up as fears and all sorts of different things. It can show up as, um, you know, even phobic responses can come as a result of a memory or a historic um, experience, which you then solidify and hold and carry with you in every moment going forward until you take a look at it and, and change it. So what I would call negative or difficult memories um, that still affect you today normally means that in some way you've personalized some or, or create an identity around that specific situation. Now, of course, MPA is fantastic because it helps you soften and let go of the identities where they're unhelpful or no longer suit you. Now, obviously, there's different ways that we can um, notice that this mechanism is happening. Uh, there's the obvious ones where you literally are remembering consciously um, being affected by something. Um, so you remember, for example, being in a car accident um, and from that you have a phobia of driving. So you literally know, well, there was this time when, you know, I, I was in this car accident and since then I've always felt really unsafe in a car. Now, that's a fairly obvious one, but a lot of the time it's more hidden because we tend to... Um, you know, part of our dealing with life stuff, the mechanisms that we help deal to ourselves with life is we sort of just pack those memories and those energies away, sort of out of sight. They are there and they can come up, but often they're hidden. Um, and in those situations, it might be history because, but you might just have the experience of you're not sure why, <laughs> but you feel like there's something in the past that means that you can't do this or that you, you know, you have to do that. You know, there's various things, that rules start to show up around things and you're not quite sure why that is. That can often be symptomatic, if you like, of having some kind of past situation where you've, um, you've personalized it in a way which means you're now set up as that's just, you know, I don't do that. Um, now, I mean, I could give you a number of examples, but this is so prevalent. I'm gonna, gonna have to stay general <laughs> because we all have a gazillion memories, right? So I would encourage you in for the purposes of, of getting something out of this episode that's practical, um, just notice what pops into your mind when I start talking about those memories in the past that you sense at this point, you know, give you some kind of limitation. Of course, in the hands of um, someone who's a, a trained practitioner, they may help you get access to uh, the hidden memories. But just off the cuff for right now, just consider, you know, what the memories that come to mind that you already get a sense that you somehow create limitations on yourself as a result of that past experience. Now, on the subject of going and looking for hidden memories, I just do want to make a distinction here. When I'm not talking about analysis. So, Again, in, in the non-personal model, um, you know, I mentioned a little while ago about mastery. One of the things that, that you'll learn when you come to mastery is that it's not about digging for memories for memory's sake. That's the job of analysis, right? Well, <laughs> and it might not necessarily be where a particular client needs to go. As I said, history isn't actually history. Everything you need is here in the present. But it can be someone's most natural um, sort of place that they are expressing their energy is through memories, in which case it's really good to have tools and ways to work with memories if they come up. So the distinction I'm making here is from an MPA perspective, where we use the agendalist way, it's, we don't go saying, well, I'm just going to go looking for memory because we know all of our pain comes from our childhood kind of thing. That's that's called dogma. <laughs> it's a dogmatic idea. And it may be that at times it shows up in a client in that form, but it isn't necessarily where you have to go. Hence my opening with, you know, you can heal without the history with MPA. You certainly can. But that doesn't mean you dismiss history either. Hence this podcast. So what we do with MPA is we're really untangling the personalization. If you've got a limitation tied up in with some past memory, then doing the MPA process with it, well, you've got to find the, um, you know, find where that tie up has happened, where the tangling has happened. 
and then the process itself helps you literally say that's not actually me after all <laughs> freeing you up to uh to find the most natural expression that's more in harmony with where you are now um the other thing i wanted to mention in in this section really is about forgiveness because when we talk about history and the past one topic that comes up time and time again um, is about forgiveness. I know there's lots of ideas out there that you can't change your past unless you have forgiveness. And forgiveness is a, a wonderful thing. The wonderful thing that I discovered, because uh, let me take a step back from that actually, um, in my previous um, life as a therapist really, um, the modalities that I used were very much focused on forgiveness. Forgiveness was effectively the goal of the therapy. Um, and there were lots of hoops to jump through to get to forgiveness. Now, I'm not knocking that as a, as a thing. It's like it's a it's a wonderful thing. But interestingly, I discovered when MPA came along, I started working with people and within myself is that when you genuinely stop taking things personally, forgiveness is kind of automatic. In fact, the whole concept of forgiveness um, has the potential to become, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but just not necessary. Because if it wasn't personal, then there's, you know, forgiveness sort of implies that there was something that happened uh, around which there was maybe blame or or cause. Whereas at the deepest level, and we really go in this rabbit hole in mastery, um, you know, fundamentally, if nothing is personal, then there would be nothing to forgive. There's just the isness of everything. I know that's a bit deep for this whole, let's just look at your memory stuff, but I wanted to presence it really because um, I know it's a topic when we talk about memories or all about forgiveness. Um, trust the MPA and you may find that just forgiveness comes along all by itself. So the next piece of the puzzle is, well, how do you work with memories? So as I said, I'm not going to encourage you to go digging, but if there's one that's there, you can think about that in terms of, of, of how you might apply what I'm going to offer you in the next section. So let's do that. One of the things, by the way, that I will be talking about is often when you go back to your history um, and the challenging memories, you'll come across conflict in some form, which is where the harmony equation comes into its own with um with amazing amazing results so before we get into how to work with memories using mpa uh let's have a word from me our sponsor <laughs> about the harmony equation check this out and i catch you on the other side this episode is sponsored by the harmony equation our live online workshop where you get to discover the world's simplest tool for resolving conflict and help your clients find harmony now, if you've got clients that seem stuck, blocked, and unable to move past certain issues, then chances are they have unresolved conflict, and the approaches you've been using so far haven't hit the spot. Well, you're going to love this event, and you and your clients will love the truly unique, powerful, and effortless way you can guide them to the resolutions they need once you have this tool in your hands. In fact, the work you'll learn at the event is so magical, I use it with nearly every client. As Ronnie, a previous attendee, says, you've created something very special and made it a simple and effective tool to cut out the complexities we add to our lives. The work you're doing really resonated with me and the work I'm now doing with my clients. So if you're a healer, a therapist, a coach, or do any kind of change work with clients, then this is an incredible tool to add to your skill set. So head over to www.thenpaacademy.com slash harmony and grab your spot today. That's thenpaacademy.com slash harmony to get all the details and join the Harmony Equation today. All right, so I promised you some practical steps of how to use MPA working with memory. So what I'm going to do is give you a couple of insights into some of the advanced ways that we work um, with memories. Um, and then I'm going to give you the, the, the basic approach, which you can get from the sheet so you can have a go and play with this at home and hopefully set yourself free from some limiting memory or some personalization that's been tied up in an active energy. <laughs> 
uh, that's causing a limitation right now. You can set yourself free of that just using the sheet. Remember, if you want to get the sheet, you need to go to www.thempaacademy.com, hit that quick start button, um, give me your email and I will send you the sheet so you have the words handy. And also within that, that of course will help explain some of the terminology I'm using if you've never come across it before. So first up, um, I want to talk about dialoguing. Um, now I talked a bit about dialoguing in episode 103 uh, and 104 actually, but 103 in particular, I gave you some ideas of how to use a dialoguing techniques. I love dialoguing techniques. Dialoguing techniques, what does that mean? It means having a conversation, okay? So if you know that there's a memory that's happening, um, that, that's influencing you, you can effectively simply in your mind's eye go back to that memory and have a conversation with all of those parts that are in there. So, you know, the younger you that is experiencing it, if there's other people involved, you can have a conversation with them. It just needs that leap of imagination. Now, the thing about a conversation from an MPA perspective um, MPA basics is that um, it starts with usually a question, uh, question one or question two, we'll get to those. <laughs> um, and then there, there's what we call an MPA, a spew, which means just a natural expression. So any dialoguing situation is naturally a spew. And what happens is when there's a natural expression, so if I'm with a client, I'd say just so you know, well, question one is what are you experiencing? You'd like to allow to pass. Um, and they would just talk, just be natural, like two people sat over with a cup of coffee having a chat. And I'd be listening for uh, the cookie cutters, as we call them, which is the keyword that goes into the MPA process. Now, if you're doing a dialogue with a memory, you're naturally in a situation where spew is happening. Um, or from which you can notice what pops out, that's the cookie cutters, and then that goes into the MPA process, the six simple lines, of which five of them have a space, whatever pops out goes into that. That way you can start to unpick and untangle all the different aspects that are tied up within a specific memory. Uh, all that lovely forgiveness stuff can come along. Um, it's fantastic. So I do love dialoguing as a way to work with memories. In fact, um, there's sort of specific ways that I've set up for people to do that. So um, within part of the MPA mastery course, the certified trainers course, um, we do what I call MPA frames. Um, the harmony equation is part of one frame. And I teach that at the harmony equation event. And um, there are other ones which are fantastic for working in the context of dialoguing. The one that springs to mind is we've got one called the MPA time machine. So all the people that have been through master already already have access to this tool, but it's a, it's a way that uh, we've got set out for you to literally be able to get into a time machine and go and access the memories and the aspects of memories that, that uh, are impacting you in a particular way. And it gives you a way, a frame of working through them so that you can then um, redo that scene <laughs> and free yourself up. But dialoguing is at the heart of that. And, and I recommend that if you've got any skills in dialoguing, consider dialoguing with memories, but think of it as any conversation within that, that dialoguing is, um, is an opportunity to listen for the cookie cutters that pop out that you can then use with MPA. And that's what begins to get the ball rolling and set you free. Now, if you're saying to me, how do I talk with a memory? Well, the ways that if you're on your own in particular, if you're not working with a therapist or a coach or um, an MPA practitioner, then um, journaling is one of my favorite ways to do that. I'm a big fan of doing that inner inquiry work with a journal. I journal on my laptop. Um, you can do it longhand, whatever suits you, but it's literally just have a conversation. So, you know, go back to the memory and say, okay, who's in the memory? Well, there's the younger me, I was six, you know, there's my dad, there's my mum, you know, and there's, you know, somebody else. Okay, so who needs to say what? Just let it be free flow. Well, the younger me says, <laughs> I don't know why they said that, but they said that. Write it down, notice what pops out. And if you're writing it down, you can literally go back over that and just underline the phrases or the words that pop out to you when, when you read it back. And that will give you the basis of doing a whole set of MPA processes to help you free up your experience. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I mentioned the harmony equation. This is because as I said, what you may find in the context of working with memories is that conflict comes up. 
Now, conflict's okay, you can have a dialogue, all the rest of it, but the conflict I'm talking about is where you come to that kind of rock and a hard place, nothing's budging, um, there's some unresolvable, um, you know, push-pull situation that means you can't get past a certain point. That's where the Harmon equation comes into its, its own. As I said, as part of mastery, there's literally um, about 34 different frames that you learn as part of mastery. Uh, the integration frame, which has the Harmony Equation at its core and is what I'll be teaching in, in the Harmony Equation event, is incredibly powerful um, for resolving conflict in, wherever it shows up in your life. Now, in terms of memories, if you have access to that, to the Harmony Equation, within that dialoguing, within that um, those spews and dialogues that are taking place to resolve the memory, you can easily navigate through the conflict because what I often hear is is people will do that dialoguing, but they just go around in circles, get blocked up, get tied up. That's why we have professional people to help you. Um, but at the same time, um, that people who have the harmony equation go, oh, I recognise this. There are parts in conflict. I can just do. It takes a few minutes just to to do this simple breakdown of how to get. Um, to the nub, the, the harmony equation, because it resolves the equation. Uh, you discover what the conditions that are required, um, go through the process, and it's like pressing a button, and out the bottom of that vending machine comes the key that will help all the parts pull together and move forward rather than being stuck and going around in those circles. So it's a good example of, of where the harmony equation itself can be incredibly powerful for working with memories. Uh, now let's get to the the basic approach. So this is a, this is a way that anyone can do it. So um, if you're thinking of a memory, as I said to you in in the, the first half of this this show, um, let it be easy for yourself. You know, you're probably aware of at least one memory that you sort of cling on to and doesn't really help you much. So when you think about that memory, to bring it to mind. And then if you downloaded the sheet, you know there's two questions, question one and question two. We're going to use question one for working with the painful memories. Question one is what are you experiencing that you'd like to allow to pass? So if you sort of pre-phrase that with in this memory, what am I experiencing that I'd like to allow to pass? And then literally again spew, as we say in MPA, which again can be a matter of journaling, switching on your, uh, your recording app on your phone and just speaking it out. Um, listen back to get the cookie cutters. That's a really simple way to work with memories. And if you're committed to it, if you've got, oh my God, my life is, got, I've got so many memories that I keep going back to and they block me and they, they keep me tied up and I feel like a child again in this situation. Classic example where a memory may be at play. Again, simply go back to the memory and ask yourself, in this memory, what am I experiencing that I would like to allow to pass? follow through the steps of the MPA process sheet, um, do the MPA process, and it's amazing how quickly you can free yourself up from being locked in that memory. So I hope that this has been helpful to you and uh, that you've got some interesting stuff from it. Do let me know. Um, you can comment on the posts that show up on social media. There's always one on our Facebook page, which is MPA Rocks, um, or on Instagram at Joel Young MPA, or find me on LinkedIn, all the usual places, and uh, comment back to me. Um, or if you're on YouTube, then of course the comment section's right there below this video. So um, do let me know what the memories you're working on. What did you experience? Uh, what was it that you were? You know, experiencing you'd like to have a pass, and how did the MPA go? Give it a go. Make sure, of course, you go ahead, download the sheet. Again, go to www.thempaacademy.com and look for that quick start button. Press that. Give me an email. I'll send you the sheet straight away. Um, and next week, we're going to have a look at using um, our positive memories, really sort of powering up your positive memories because held within the positive memories are all sorts of fantastic things that you can supercharge and use in your life. So I'll see you next time. Otherwise, thanks for listening and I'll see you soon. 
Thanks so much for listening. If you've enjoyed this show, I'd love you to do me a solid and tell someone about it. They can find us on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, and most other podcast platforms. Plus, if you visit the website, www.babrillianhuman.com, you can share the show notes to social media and make my day. Also, make sure you hit that follow button. And if you haven't yet downloaded the MPA process sheet, head on over to joelyoungmpa.com and get your free copy today. Big love and see you next time.